Hello and welcome to Auntie Darren. How are you doing today this wonderful Sunday? Guess what? We missed Mix It Up Sunday or Stir It Up Sunday, whatever you want to call. In this video I'm going to teach you how to make mincemeat not from scratch but so you can put your own signature on it so everybody will love it. And guess what? Come forward a minute. There you go. Hello. Judy's here. Stick with me. I'm here to help and advise. Yeah, because this is really my mum's method. And I like homemade mincemeat. Homemade mincemeat is a wonderful thing. But the problem I have with it is you have to make it at the start of December um, when, to be honest, you've got a lot of extra things to do. And I haven't got time anymore. Not that I work. Now I no longer work for the supermarket I used to. I have more time than ever to look after my mum and make it so she gets everything she needs. <laughs> anyway, if it's your first time here, and thank you very much to all the new subscribers, welcome to Auntie Darren. This channel's all about making the most of what you have and making it so it feed your family for less and it's not all about food for so I'm not every day going to be doing corned beef hash and and stuff like that I want to make your life as much luxury as I can for as little money as I can and that's the idea of the channel um, so to all the new subscribers thank you very much for joining us uh do you know we've had over i think 250 new subscribers Absolutely. in the past month so hello and welcome yes hello. having said that welcome <laughs> what do you want me to say it's just saying welcome <laughs> you know we we'll talk we will be talking over each other throughout the video because that's what i do best i nag and she keeps going on and on and on but she's out of hospital so for all those messages of of get well soon and all of that no i'm not hiding her in the attic it's christmas this is when i like to get her out let her out of the bedroom you know give her a bit of Trouble give her a the shower and hose me down yeah i've got i've got the pressure washer outside <laughs> so where are we going to start? I know, dashing through the snow. I, no, that's not what you want. Oh, you want cooking. A couple more things to say. First thing, if it is your first time here and looking at my analytics, I know, I'm getting all posh now. Can't looking, spell it though. I can't, I can't spell that. But looking at my analytics, I know that 50% of you that are watching aren't subscribed. So do me a massive, massive favour. Go down underneath this video, subscribe to the channel and trust me, you help to feed two cats, a little dog and a mother. And that to me is... But it won't is, cost you anything. No, it's free for you. Secondly... This is where it might cost you something. Coming up there is my PayPal link. If you would like to support the channel, then please do me an enormous favour. Follow the PayPal link. Every single penny gets ploughed straight back into the channel. And it means that I can continue to make these videos just for you. Eventually, I will be having a Patreon page so you can go and join the channel and I'll be starting channel memberships up but to be honest why should they support the channel mother because it's brill and it's Darren and everybody loves a Darren a Darren's for life not just for Christmas yeah. anyway without further ado let's get into the video and I'm going to show you my hack on making the best almost homemade mincemeat ever you want a big bowl? Not yet, I don't. What so, it, no, it gives me, it gives, shows me exactly where I'm starting. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I had a clipperboard, we'd be using a clipperboard. <laughs> She's winding me up. But luckily this bit ain't going to go on the film so she can continue because that was just before a clap. But anyway, jump in a minute. Let's try doing that properly, shall we? 
So where do we start? And if you're wondering what that clap's about, don't worry about it. Mother was wondering before and the dog is just the dog. So don't worry about that, that just tells me when I'm editing the video where I need to stop. And where do you need to start? Well, we're going to start off with last year's and two years ago's mincemeat. This doesn't have a use-by date. It is a pasteurised product, so forget the dates that are on there. The dates that are on things like mincemeat, cans and all that, they're not for you. They're for the supermarket, so you're always getting the fresh products from the supermarket. So yes, when you go into the supermarket and you're checking, your shell, checking the shelves out on cans and stuff, look for uh, dates. Not actual dates. That would make you very, very sad. Looking for a date. Mind you, date mind you, in St Sainsbury's in Salford, where I used to work, Wednesday night was date night. Well, gay date night, so yeah. Tinder night, grinder night. Anyway, I'm getting off subject. These dates, forget them, they will, and we're about to preserve them even more by adding luscious things into there. So, first thing I'm gonna get. Is a large mixing bowl. I stole this off a child outside. They were playing. They were playing outside the front door, making mud pies with it. So I nicked it off them. Cause that's the sort of person that I am. A lightweight one's better, anyway. And just empty your mince meat, cause this is your base. It's like when you make stuffing and you use a packet of mincemeat mix before you start adding stuff to it. Or even a packet of Paxo. Well, yeah, but I wasn't going to give Paxo the satisfaction of having this. Do you know there. what? I don't see why we don't. Well, yes, but the point is, Darren, with stuffing mix, supermarket basics is good. Yeah, but don't say that because if Paxo are watching, hi Paxo, you're fabulous. I might make money. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, never mind. Ebenezer Nichols. I've got to try and do it. I don't work anymore. I'm what well, you never did do much. But there is a reason why I no longer work for Sainsbury's, and it's basically so I can concentrate on looking after my mum. So first things first, we're going to scrape that mincemeat out, and just to prove a point, there is nothing wrong with that. Don't throw your jars away, you're going to use them in a little bit. We'll just move them to one side and I'm going to move this. Oh, down here. You will need, and I like a big bag of fruit. I love a fruity bag. Anyway, some cherries, some sultanas. They're really posh golden sultanas. If you can't get golden sultanas, if you can't get a mixture of fruit or mixed or specifically mixed fruit, you get you put into this whatever you can afford. That's the important thing about this channel. It's all about you and what you can get you can afford. So if all you can get is the best supermarket thing to get, basics. The best thing to get is the cheapest supermarket basic mixed dried fruit. Which is, believe it or not, I know this is Whitworth's. But this was from Ocado and it was all on offer. On the, what, three for two pounds, yeah, something, something like that. You know, so yeah. So I've got some currants, some sultanas, some, oh, a bag of mixed fruit. And That's important. I didn't know I'd ordered mixed fruit as well. You At least I could, oh yes. So another, an extra thing of mixed peel. And yes, it's already chopped. It's Christmas time, why make work for yourself? Use the shortcuts. Some shortcuts are brilliant, some shortcuts are a waste of time. My favourite shortcut cut is on Christmas day using frozen veg. And before you all turn off in your droves, because I've mentioned frozen veg, yes. it's fresher than the veg you will get from the supermarket because it's frozen at source. For example, a, fro a pea 
is frozen in the field. It's all complicated the way they do it, but it's frozen at source in the field. So it's fresher than if you were to buy veg. And a week beforehand. Been, that has been in the supermarket, or sometimes been in the supermarket for three months or longer. Because they keep it in chill conditions. Yeah, that's, I think that's all I need, because I've not got many mince pies to make this year. So, because I've no friends anymore. Nobody loves me. Everybody anyway. hates me, I think I'll go and eat worms. You know, that what that particular song has turned into a TikTok classic. So yeah, saying TikTok classics, if you would like to follow me on social media, coming up about there are my social media links. And yes, I'm on TikTok. I'm down with the kids. I'm living it large. So we're going to start off by getting the dried fruit in with the uh, Why did mix. Why you start by cutting the cherries up? Because I want to start by doing it this way, there's oh, a reason. You know, because Mum does this every year, there's two separate ways of doing it. There's my way of doing it. And the right way. And there's Mum's way of and doing it. The right way. And there is no right or wrong way to do it. <laughs> but for me, it's let's clear my board down with as, much as, with as much rubbish as I can. So we're going to start off with the Sultanas. Don't add them all! This also is a You asked me to be involved with this video, so don't pull faces. This also is a good thing to do if you're going to give it as presents. Hence the reason why I'm going to add a lot of fruit to it, a lot of extra fruit to it. And don't worry, nobody will know that you've used store-bought mincemeat as, um, as a base. Unless you tell them, of course. And why wouldn't you tell them? Because they'll turn around and say, God, that mincemeat was so good, how did you make it? You just send them to my video, of course, and then I'll tell them. They're currants. Now, I don't like currants, so I'm just going to add currants three have a quarter. Currants have flavour, they're an essential, but they tend to have a little stone in them. You know, if you go in just anything with fruit, you get that. Yeah. Yucky bit, that crunchy bit in it. It's usually a stone in the currants. And they're little, so they're very hard to de-stone. Raisins. If you can tear these, if you can tear these away from your kids, a good thing of raisins. Now, I want about three quarters of the raisins as well. I don't want too many vine fruits in it. So, Mum's there. She, she likes a good raisin. I'll tell you what, you can do with them, and it's a bit of a faff. And watch the face now. You can melt some chocolate and you can you can pop them into chocolate. Now you can either do it as a bar and that's just spread it out on a piece of um, a piece of plain what's it called? What's that stuff? You grease proof paper, parchment parchment paper, not grease proof paper. Re grease proof paper that things tend to stick. So spread it onto that and cut and you've got chocolate bark. But whatever your potato. But don't do no, that don't with potatoes. Put potatoes in it. No. And then we're gonna then we're going, going to add mixed fruit. The reason I like to use mixed fruit is the main reason why I've only put little bits of some of them in. I prefer sultanas to raisins, I prefer sultanas to currants, but they all have their place. So now we're gonna put a full thing of mixed fruit in. That's because it's got the mixed peel in it. And then because we can. And because it's Christmas, I'm going to add one of these little tubs of chopped mixed peel. I'm going to add about a quarter. Don't add too much, because to be honest, yeah, about a quarter of the tub of mixed peel, just to give you a little Even bit Even if extra. you don't like it, add some, because it, it increases the flavour. And it actually cooks out a lot anyway while you're cooking the mince pies. Now before I add anything else, I'm going to stir through that with the jar of mincemeat very 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 um what's it called lightly move that to one side give those to mother <laughs> taste them yourself i'm going to start off and i'm going to stand up now now we're going to cut cut some cherries up and i like cherry i like cherries 
So, best thing with cherries, use a sharp knife and just into quarters. Don't be sort of Don't regimented about it. it. Just it. give them a rough chop through. You, while you're chopping them like this, you might get some that have stayed a little bit whole. Don't need to bother washing them off. I know it's a very sticky thing, but this whole process is quite sticky. So that's plenty of you don't need to Oh very dull. I suppose it's your recipe. You see, that's mother talk for saying I know better. But the mum, cherries add colour, it, it makes it a, a, a more colourful thing. Mum comes from, from a time born in the 1950s, grew up in the 1960s and 70s, was an adult in the 1970s because that's when I came along. Now, that's your base fruit in. The next thing we're going to add is we're going to add apples. Now, this is where you have a choice. We have an eating apple. And we have a Bramley. Now the Bramley is the king of baking apples. And let's not get hung up over how to do it. All we're going to do is we're just going to grate it. Leave the skin on. Down to the core. To be honest, you can grate past the core. If you listen to some of these chefs on the television, they'll tell you that the core is perfectly edible. Well, in my opinion, no it's not. No, because the pips, apple pips are poisonous. Slightly. It takes not... about 27 ground apple pips to actually create a proper poison. But... So there's hardly any there, so I'm going to add on top of that. So I'm going to use another Bramley, and I'm going to use an eating apple. Something that if you, you gonna... can't get a Bramley, use a Granny Smith. Like so there Americans you go. do. The Americans use Granny Smith's as baking apples, don't they? Well, that's because Bramley's a, a specific English sort of thing. That's your grater used now. Move it to one side and dump all those juices and apples into... You know when Mum and I used to do it? when we Because we used to make about ten dozen, didn't we? Yeah. We used to do it in the washing up bowl. Yeah. <laughs> or a bucket. <laughs> Now, next thing, an easy peeler, commonly known as a clementine, I'm sorry I won't go to the supermarket thing, an orange and a lemon. That's a small orange. And another orange. So first of all, you never want to waste any opportunity to get flavour across. So we're going to grate the zest off and whatever you do, don't go past the top layer. Don't go down to the white pith. So please, 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 when grating fruit, do not take the pith. That's pith YouTube al algorithm. Lemons there for sharpness. And all of these are full of juice. Get them out of the fridge a couple of hours beforehand so they reach room temperature. Unfortunately, I didn't today. But I am Jeff getting... Gone a long way. I am getting loads of juice out of these. I'm also managing to cover mum in fruit juice, which will be the fruit, first fruit she's eaten in about six years. No, I had a banana the other day. Incidentally, while they're squeezing fruit, go to Aldi for your fruit. It's better value. You. you get more for your money than you do in the other supermarkets and it keeps longer. And actually, compared to the other and supermarkets... you can still get a delivery from Aldi if you use one of the delivery companies like Uber or um, what the others, Just Eat. Uber, Deliveroo, Dell. They'll deliver from Aldi, but I am going to turn around and I'm going to, at the minute, just let me go get to my little seat. I'm going to do a big, big up to Aldi 
the beauty of Aldi is for us, there's one just on the corner of our road. Number two, unlike other supermarkets who are going to inflate their prices, Aldi is still the same good value over Christmas as it is compared to Morrison's, Tesco or any of the other supermarkets. They'd still have great value and the standard of the products that you're getting from there is absolutely amazing. So that's the juice of all those fruit in and we're going to start stirring through. Now those who follow me year on year know that I have a vintage bottle of brandy. The, this is the same bottle that I used last year, the year before and the year before that. Now I'm actually going to empty this bottle today and I'll show you how to do it. And I don't mean I'll show you how to drink some brandy. So we're going to put a little bit in there. And we're going to put a little bit in there. They're the old jars that just yep. emptied them into me, Delta. He hasn't just gone out and found a couple of empty jam jars. And you go, shake it, shake it, shake it. And give it a good shake. And don't, when you're filming something, don't wear um, a jumper with jingle bells on it if you don't want to hear them. So give it a good shake. You want all the, all the goodness out. No, You're going to away. use these jars again because you're going to put the mincemeat in them in a couple of days. Some of the mincemeat. So that's all that little bit of brandy. And they won't need sterilising because you just sterilise them with brandy. Stir that through. And there is about a shot of brandy left and that's going that's about right, isn't it? and that's about the perfect amount let me show you exactly what this needs to look like so when you stirred it through remember the apple's going to release some juices in a couple of days and well, so sorry, and so are, and the fruits are going to put plump up so don't worry if it still seems a bit wet. And if it still seems wet after that, the hack I say is you can put a couple of tablespoons of breadcrumbs in there. Yeah. And it'll all soak up so you're not adding any more fruit. You can add more fruit if you've got the fruit and you want to. You can add more fruit if you've got the money. Now, I'd put two but bottles... breadcrumbs are just as good. Yeah. I put two bottles of brandy on here, there's that one, and as Mum quite rightly said, I'm not going to use that one in my cooking because this is thanks to uh, my colleagues that I used to work with at Sainsbury's, yeah I used to work at Sainsbury's, I've said it now, um, and I just thought I'd do it on camera and say thank you all very much, You, it's an amazing, it's an amazing little gift and I, both me and my mother will enjoy it over Christmas. So, all I need to do with that now stir it grab one of these um, shower cappy things it's the big one I hope yeah, these are supposed to fit any bowl No, I'm determined to do this by myself. I'm a big boy now. Leave that to one side. The advantage of that over cling film is it's reusable. Those cling films are just a single use plastic and our lives should be around, around using less plastic. Yes. And you can keep using it and stick it in the dishwasher when you finish with it. If you're lucky enough to have a dishwasher. That needs to leave go on the side now for uh, about three to four days. Checking it every day. Make it, If you need yes. to add a bit more brandy, add a bit more brandy. If you need to add a bit more 
fruit juice, add a bit more fruit juice. If it's gone too wet and you have it, add the fruit. On the last day, that's the day you decide whether you want to add breadcrumbs to it, but you really don't need to because the sloppier it is, to be honest with you, the better it yeah, is. Yeah. So it goes like toffee when you put it in the Oh it does. In in the pastry anyway. Yes. So next weekend I'm gonna we're gonna go, I'm gonna make some mince pies and show you my mince pie pastry and an alternative version of a mince pie using my version of shortbread. We're also later on this week I'm going to do the perfect perfect. Darren, it's amazing on the tape. Yes, she is. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm going to show you the perfect, perfect Christmas cake. But this Christmas cake can be done Christmas the Eve. day before Christmas. I'd say the day before Christmas Eve um, because you want it to cool down properly. But because it's a boiled fruit cake, it doesn't need to mature. You're putting enough booze in there to make it mature. Uh, and at some point, I'm trialing a recipe this afternoon, which I'm not going to film, but we're gonna try. I'm gonna try it for in between Christmas and New Year, which is the perfect roast salmon niçoise. I've been Auntie Darren. I've been Judy. Thank you all for your messages, and I'll see you in the next video.